Okay, so part two of can we bring the van back to life? So it's got a new airbag module on there. That module needs programming. Tried it with a fancy diagnostic tool. It didn't seem to be able to do it, basically. Um, we've still got our check airbag on there because we've got a blank module, effectively. So that module is new. You would normally use a dealer tool to set it up, but the dealer won't touch this van. So we've got this box from a company called Oscar. They have um, all the dealer software in their office. And basically, you talk to them using the laptop, chat to their technicians, they run the software and they develop this box. You plug it into your router, so effectively they are um, running the dealer software in their office, but it's like they were sitting here in the driver's seat running it on this laptop. Really smart device that they've developed. So that is cool. It's just kind of like syncing up with a vehicle and then you have to use your account and that tells you, you know, that everything's good with that box. And um, yeah, I'm going to chat to them and see what they can do. I don't know if they're going to try and do it as a Nissan because we know that Nissan support for third party, um, sort of third parties using their dealer software is really poor. But um, they could do it as a Renault. Oh, and I probably need to read that. So hopefully after this, after this, that won't be there. We will see. Cheers. Okay, so I've just been chatting with their technician at Oscars, explained to them what we need to do, what we're aiming to do, what we've tried to do. Um, and on their software, I can't kind of show you all the details, but I mean, that is really cool. So that is um, the voltage of the 12 volt battery as detected by that box. I mean, how cool is that? So using the system, they can tell and you can tell whether this vehicle has got enough 12 volt battery power. Normally you would have battery support to get a 13.4 volts where you would be running, but this being Renault architecture, it is running the DC-DC converter all the time. So we don't have to worry about the 12 volt battery going flat. So that is really cool. I've had a few warnings pop up on the dash. They're trying to connect and see what they can do and press all the buttons and we will see what happens. See if we can fully bring this van back to life. Yeah, this is really cool. The only thing I'm slightly concerned about is we had a power outage this morning. I was going to do this this morning. Sorry about the glare, but I can't do much about the sun. And uh, yeah, the power went <laughs> went off. It's like, okay, well, I don't want that happening while I'm doing the programming. Um, at least with these, this module doesn't cost a fortune, basically. So like if it takes us a couple of tries, because they've never done this before. Let's try and reduce that glare something like that um then yeah hopefully that won't be too much of an issue if uh, they have to have a couple of goes or whatever um or if maybe because we've sort of pressed the buttons on the big fancy machine that wasn't as fancy as it should be uh, the big um yeah the big diagnostic machine then even if uh, yeah that's caused some kind of issue then we can get a fresh module but you know you've just got to try sometimes if you're doing something that no one's done before it's not going to be simple but if you can get there that's the aim of the game. So, yeah, I'm just going to see how they're doing. And I will catch you in a bit. Cheers. Okay, well, after leaving the uh, van to go to sleep for about half an hour, which is basically what you need to do with programming modules on this architecture. That's probably good for any module, basically, to let the van fully go to sleep. After um, waking it up and starting it, we have no airbag light, which is fantastic. Oh, I hope you, there's not too much wind there. Let me just shut that window. So it's moaning about tyre pressures. The blooming Zoe's are like this as well. Unless it's perfect, they moan and they seem to randomly moan. Apparently it wants 42 in the front and 44 in the back. So I pumped them all up to 40. I wasn't happy with that. Pump the rears up to 42, which shows us 41. It's still not happy with that. So I'm just going to pump up the tyres again. Because I just want to clear the dash of any errors to make, make sure that, you know, there's not one's hiding another. I mean, we have obviously had various airbag lights on. So it looks like that's good. But yeah, I just want to totally clear this dash. So I'm just going to give it some more air. Just try and get those to disappear. One moment, please. Okay, so after various faffing around, it's now happy with the tyre pressures. I had to go slightly above. Anyway, this uh, just kind of shows we've got no warnings on the dash at all. So if we just turn that off. And obviously we had check airbag kept coming up before. We had the airbag light on there. You can see the, uh, the airbag light there. So that stays. And then it goes away. So this vehicle can now get an MOT. Because with the airbag light on, it will not get an MOT. So whereas before when I got this van, it wouldn't start. It wouldn't move and it had the airbag light on, check airbag. Now both of those things things have been resolved. So we resolved the non-start, so that was a sort of phantom code, see previous video. And um, yeah, the airbag module. So the old one, did, 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 right, I'll just swap hands. So that's where the airbag module lives. This is the original one, and then that's a new one. So this one was in the van when it had the crash. 
This isn't an old van. You can see that was manufactured 2023. It's a 23 plate van. It's even manufactured May 23. So this is just a control module. It doesn't have any sensors inside. You can tell that because it doesn't say on it, uh, discard if dropped. Basically, lots of these modules or sensors will say discard if dropped. Um, and that's basically because they've got some kind of sensor inside um, or something sensitive. This one hasn't. So this is just a straight ECU. They put it in the middle of the vehicle because it's pretty unlikely you're going to manage to crush that area there you'd have to be a pretty pretty big impact um and i think the whether the airbags go off or not will probably be the the last of your worries if that gets crushed but yeah that is seated there right in the middle so this one and this original one's got crash data stored in it um you can't via the diagnostic port you can't delete that data uh, some companies will clear it for you manually so they open this up get the circuit board out put the circuit board on the bench and they will um the chips on the circuit board they'll put power and power ground and data wires onto those chips and then clear it directly basically wipe the memory directly on the chip this one um when they sent it off well, the company said we've never done one of these before the chips are too new nobody knows what to do with it basically because as well as you know what kind of chip it is and have you got some software that can talk to that chip you've got to work out how that chip is storing the data because it's not you can't just wipe the whole thing because it will have configuration data like for example this is a van so it's not got rear seats it's not got rear belts so you know this module holds configuration data it holds the vin it doesn't just hold crash data so you can't just wipe it someone has to work out the structure of that data and how it's stored to be able to delete the right bit basically wipe the right bit of data no one had done it before so there's nothing we could do with that that is just scrap basically so it arrived with a new box with a new airbag module so we put that on we had a go to see if we could initialize it with the um, fancy expensive diagnostic software fancy expensive yeah diagnostic tool um but this being a really new van wasn't really fully implemented and it wanted us to buy tokens to unlock a gateway but it was also, um, there was the complexity that this is a Nissan branded van, but it's actually got a Renault VIN. It is a, um, it is a branded, rebranded um, Kangoo E-Tech. It's all Kangoos at the moment. There's one, there's one there as well, if it'll focus. Kangoo, another Kangoo, slightly earlier one. Um, but this is Nissan branded. But if you've got a Zoe ZE50, yeah, all these switches and everything are straight out of the ZE50, all of this. If I do this, you wouldn't know what you are. Maybe these are a little bit different, a bit wider, but, you know, these buttons are straight out of the Zoe ZE50. And that is what this is most similar to, the R135 variant of a ZE50. So, yeah, that that diagnostic machine couldn't do the initialising. And, um, yeah, basically, we used that remote programming service. It is so cool, that service. So the dealer wouldn't touch this van at all because it's a write-off rebuild. Whereas with that software, with the... That, the tech guys running that dealer software and then communicating with the van directly it's like we've been sat in the dealer basically we've effectively run the dealer software on on this van and it's initialized that module so basically that is to put the vin in that module and it's also to give it the variant information so to tell it it's a van um to it's um you know yeah to tell it it's not got rear seats and rear belts it's you know because otherwise you'll get an airbag light on if it's expecting rear seat belts or you know rear airbags that kind of thing so you tell it what vehicle it is um and it sort of sets up that airbag module for this van and it does the VIN coding as well so yeah that is a brand new one it's got 2024 date on it so that is very cool I'm quite pleased with that, really. It's such an unknown, this. Nobody's done them before. And you kind of have a go and sort of see what happens. And, um, yeah, I've started and stopped it a few times. Taking it a short drive, obviously just kind of off-road, basically, because this van, I think, should have an MOT before it goes back on the road, even though it's under three years old, because it is technically written off. But, um, yeah, this van can now... Um, can now go and get finished off so there's like a center console obviously that's meant to go here there's bits and bobs of bodywork to do but they just kind of wanted to make sure that actually they'd be able to get it through an MOT before they finished it off so that is cool hope you enjoyed that um yeah and uh, consider subscribing and joining the membership and um yeah i have to say if you've got a vehicle that's a little bit weird on the electronic front then um yeah maybe let me know all right cool Catch you later. Cheers.